In this video, we'll discuss two more tools, local regression and generalized additive models, that help us model nonlinear trends. Let's start with local regression. The idea behind local regression is to fit regression models in small localized regions of the predictor using only a nearby subset of the data to do so. This is illustrated in this figure from the ISLR book. In this panel, the local regression method is trying to make a prediction at about x equals 0.05. We see that the colored points are contributing to a local fit at this point. The gray points are left out. The colored points are used to find the line of best fit in this small region. Usually, this best fitting line is found with a weighted least squares approach, rather than the unweighted least squares approach used in ordinary linear regression. In the weighted least squares approach, the idea is that data points closest to the target point of x equals 0.05 should contribute more should be weighted more in determining the slope of the line. Points that are further away should be weighted less. The shaded distribution illustrates the weighting scheme. The height of the distribution indicates how much weight a data point at that x-axis location is given in the weighted least squares estimation. Repeating this process for a grid of x-axis points gives the estimated function in orange. The estimate is fairly close to the true function in blue, which happens to be known in this case because the data were simulated. An example of the process for another target point is shown on the right. Here, the local weighted least squares approach gives a fit that slopes downward. Overall, this approach is pretty similar to k-nearest neighbors regression. This technique is called LOS, which stands for locally estimated scatter plot smoothing. There are a number of choices that arise in local regression to tailor the smooth function that's estimated. The first choice is the type of model to use for the local trends. Using ordinary linear regression, in other words, a degree one polynomial is quite common. Degree two and three polynomials are also considered, which correspond to local quadratic and local cubic regression. Another choice is the weighting scheme to use. The one pictured here is a normal distribution, which is the most common. But there are many other weighting schemes possible that give high weight to nearby and low weight to far away points. These weighting schemes are also called kernels. The third choice, and by far the most important choice, is the size of the span that determines what points are nearby to the target point. With a large span, the estimate of the function at each point is determined by a large portion of the data, so the estimated function is smooth. This is illustrated on the figure in the bottom right with the smooth blue line. The span of 0.7 means that 70% of the data are used for each local fit. In contrast, with a small span, only very close data points determine the estimate, so the estimated function is a bit noisier. This is illustrated with the orange line, where the span of 0.2 means that 20% of the data are used for each local fit. As you can imagine, there's a bias variance trade-off with the span size. A large span results in an estimate that has more bias but less variance because the estimate is smoother. A small span results in an estimate that has less bias because it's more complex, but this results in higher variance because the estimate jumps around much more. So far, we have mostly focused on using nonlinear techniques for modeling nonlinearity in one predictor at a time. Oftentimes, we want to be able to model nonlinearity in potentially several predictors. Generalized additive models allow us to do just that. The framework for how a generalized additive model, or GAM, is written follows directly from how a multiple linear regression model is written. A multiple linear regression model is expressed as a sum of linear terms for each predictor. A GAM is expressed as a sum of arbitrary functions of each predictor. We can specify any function for each of these functions. For example, we could use the logarithm or square root function. We can even specify representations in terms of polynomial regression, natural cubic splines, or local regression. What output do we get when we fit a GAM? We get estimates of the intercept, 
F1, F2, all the way up, up through FP. Let's take a look at an example of what this looks like on a real data set. Say that we want to model hourly wages as a function of the year, an individual's age, and education level. A general GAM formulation is shown here. We say that wage is a function of an intercept term to set the baseline wage, as well as arbitrary functions of year, age, and education level. Statistical software that fits GAMs needs a little more guidance than this, though. We need to state the form that these F functions should take. For example, we'll say that these functions should take the form of estimates from local regression. When we do that, statistical software is able to fit the GAM model, and we get output that looks like this below. Each of these plots shows the F function estimated for the three predictor variables in our model. Recall that in multiple linear regression, coefficients for individual predictors are interpreted while holding constant the other variables. The same is true for GAMs. The left plot shows the relationship between wages and year, holding constant an individual's age and education level. We see that, on average, for individuals with a fixed age and education level, wages increase over the years. The middle plot shows the relationship between wages and age, holding constant calendar year, and an individual's education level. We see that on average, individuals in a fixed year and with a fixed education level see an initial increase in wages with age, followed by a decrease. The last plot shows the relationship between wages and education level, holding constant calendar year, and an individual's age. We see that on average, individuals in a fixed year and with a fixed age see an increase in wages with increasing education. So in summary, local regression is another tool for modeling nonlinear trends and is similar in idea to KNN regression. Local regression is often coupled with generalized additive models, a technique for estimating nonlinear relationships between a response and multiple predictors. Because the functions estimated with GAMS are interpreted as holding constant the other predictors, GAMS have this nice feature of being fairly interpretable.